Modern Christian dads, modern Christian dads, modern Christian dads, modern Christian dads, 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 dads. Just a couple of dudes talking news, sports, and guns. What's up, guys? Welcome into the Modern Christian Dads Podcast. My name is Jeremiah Johnson. This is episode number 45. This is going to be a special one. We have a musical artist and guest songwriter on today, Bob Stevens, Michael Connors. It's going to be really cool. This is going to be a first for us here on the MCD Podcast, so we don't want to waste any amount of time. Let's hop into it, but let's welcome once again the MCD guys, the host of this show. Obviously, I'm Jeremiah Johnson, but let's give it up for Kelly Stevens as well. Good afternoon, everyone. Wow, you got the applause today. Yeah, they had more than one fan. That's good. <laughs> That's good. Oh, all right. <laughs> and Greg Craywick. What's Hello, up, Greg? everyone. Hello. Thank you. Thank Greg. You. Seriously? <laughs> yes, seriously. Once again, it is the MCD guys. Thank you for being part of the MCD Nation. We exist to bring you guys encouragement and entertainment each and every week. So before we dive in it, let's have a little small talk before we get into our guests. Guys, you got any hot takes over the weekend? Things that happened in your life, such as circumstances, situations? Well, I will say that uh, we had an awesome men's breakfast uh, the other day. Yes. Greg, thanks for putting that together. No problem. It was a lot of fun, and uh, we had a good turnout. If it involves food, you can count on me being there. <laughs> yeah, so and apparently great. a few other guys, too. And a few other guys, too. It was a great time. Look <laughs> it, forward to many more of those in the future. Yeah, it was just a great time of fellowship. Yeah. A uh, great time to kind of join together and, and um, uh, you know, Jesus was there. He was right in the middle of us. Yeah. It was cool. And somebody pointed out, which I thought was kind of amazing, that there was 12 of us there. There were. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> There's our mic. Right. Right. It right. was a great time. Well, you guys are thinking spiritual talk already. I was yeah. just thinking about sports. And so well, I, all throughout yeah. the weekend, I mean, uh, I have, just in a nutshell, Brady is old. Tom Brady, that is. He is old. He's looking old, guys. He's uh, falling off the cliff. I think that cliff is coming down the pipe. The The Patriots got smoked last night yeah. uh, by the Baltimore Ravens. And so it's kind of looking like Brady is truly on the decline yeah. now. So. That's what happens when you turn 42, I guess. Uh, Shout out to my son, Drake. Uh, His Saints are still playing really well. Yes. Uh, The Browns stink. That was my other takeaway from the weekend. I'm not a Cleveland Browns fan, but Cleveland Browns had a lot of hype going into this year as if they were going to be a real contender there in the AFC. And they are now two and six. uh, And their Oklahoma, former Oklahoma Sooners quarterback, they're not looking so good. Ooh, yeah, I do. I do have some some sports news that you may or may not be interested in. Roger Penske bought the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Yeah, not and, interested. And, <laughs> <laughs> at least you're honest. And the IRL Racing Series. So you know that place I was reading an article generates thirty two billion dollars a year. Wow, I, I would not have guessed that. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, it did not disclose how much he paid for it. I guess that was going to be released today or tomorrow or something like that. But I just thought that was interesting because anything that guy touches just skyrockets and goes through the roof. So it'd be interesting to see what comes out of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and the IRL Racing Series. Yeah. So. Well, do, you, do you think that's peaked a little bit? Or? I don't know. I Yeah, I do, I guess, because it seemed to be kind of in the 90s was kind of the heyday for that kind of stuff. And it's kind of been on a decline. But I think that now he's getting involved. I think we'll see positive things come out of that. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Good, good, good news take on that one there, Greg. Uh, The Lakers are looking awesome. They went uh, 2-0 over the weekend. They beat the Dallas Mavericks and the San Antonio Spurs on a two-game road trip. So my Lakers are looking good. (laughs) And finally, Saturday night, uh, there was fights, but there was one fight, the Nate Diaz. Jorge Masvidal fight for UFC 244, I believe it was. Guys, Jorge Masvidal is psychotic beast. I mean, he is amazing. <laughs> well, he so took is out, Diaz, <laughs> but uh, did he not win? <laughs> no, he took out, uh, it was a TKO in the third round. Oh, my God. They actually, it was actually a doctor's stoppage because uh, Diaz's face was so split open from top yeah. to bottom that they called the fight. Some oh, people wow. were Somebody mad. Somebody would have had to call the fight because he's not going to quit. That yeah. guy... Yeah. I mean, those brothers are amazing, I think. But. Wow. He's a zombie. I mean, you you can't <laughs> knock him out. He just no. keeps coming forward. But they stopped the fight. And even Dana White was a little hesitant on the stoppage at the beginning. But uh, Dana White had the opportunity to go into the locker room following the fight. And he said his eyelid was flipping, o- flapping over his eye. And he was split open. And, <laughs> oh, my gosh. And he's like, yeah, it was, it was, it was a, good a good stoppage. Call. So, yeah. But Jorge Masvidal, I mean, he was... 
what Conor Greg McGregor was maybe three years ago. I mean, he's really? so hot. He's so hungry. He's so. I mean, this is a guy that even when I hear his name, I want to hide my my wife and children <laughs> at this point. I mean, he That's is scary. violent. Wow. He is an animal. He is a beast. He is on fire. In Did the he UFC just take right control now. right at the beginning? Or I mean, for people who are Nate Diaz fans, I can see that they're going to say, oh, oh, but I mean, just look at Nate Diaz's face. Watch the fight. <laughs> uh, Masvidal was clearly the aggressor, clearly in control of that fight. Mm. And so I know Nate Diaz wants to run it back, but I wouldn't want to run anything back with that man. I'd want to run the other direction <laughs> no way. if Jorge Masvidal was in the room. There's my weekend hot takes. Sports. Well, that was a good one. Yeah. I really wanted to watch that, actually. That's but that cool. was the only good fight. The other undercard fights were not that good. I mm. watched highlights here and there. Um, Darren Till was back in the game. And there's just a few other ones. Nothing really exciting, with the exception of that one. Any and women fights? There, oh, I don't know. Maybe on the potential undercard. But the, the main card fights were not any women fights. Mm -hmm. The other two things that were very exciting about that is that President Donald Trump was in attendance. Yeah, I, oh. I heard about that. I, I heard uh, CNN was uh, saying that everybody was uh, kind of booing him and that kind of thing. But for the part I heard, they were cheering him on. Yeah. yeah. And then secondly, The Rock was in the house uh, yes. uh, oh, yeah. to give the belt to the winner because oh, really? they had a belt, a special belt made called the BMF belt. I'll leave that open to the interpretation of what those particular three-letter <laughs> words stand for, yep. but he was the one giving that <laughs> belt out. Well, <laughs> enough of that, guys. Today, we got to get into this. We have a singer, songwriter team here together, Bob Stevens, Michael Connors. They're going to be talking about a song that they wrote that just was released just not long ago called Stand Our Ground. Before we dive into that, let's thank our sponsor. We're going to welcome these guys into the MCD podcast. Hi, my name is Jeremiah Johnson. I am the host of Grace Point Daily and the Modern Christian Dads podcast. But most importantly, I have the coolest job of being the lead pastor of Grace Point Assembly in Carthage, Missouri. Our church is about helping people discover a relationship with Christ and your purpose in Him, connecting other followers of Christ together in relationship and living out the mission of God. Why don't you join us for a service next time you're in this area? For more information, service times, and our address, go to gracepointag.org. We hope to see you soon. All right, guys. So here we go. This is a first for the MCD podcast. Our first ever musical artist, Bob Stevens and Michael Connors, joining us here today, Modern Christian Dads Podcast. Let's welcome them to the podcast. Welcome on, guys. Hey, great to be here, y'all. This is Michael. <laughs> that was the wrong button. I'm sorry. <laughs> great to be here. This is Bobby. Hey, Bob. Good to have you guys on. Actually, you deserve this. You deserve a round of applause. Hey, you know, that's the much better. Podcast. <laughs> no, we he heard the get, name Stevens, and that was just. Yeah. We need to get a better producer on this show. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, guys, guys, we're so grateful to have you guys on the show. Why don't uh, each of you just give us a little backdrop about who you are, a uh, little intro, a little bio about who each of you are. Are. Okay, my name's. You want to go? They just want a little background of what we're, of who we are. It it all. Oh, just tell them who you are and a little bit of your history up to this point. Okay, now. Yeah. Uh, the the song came about abortion. Uh, I'm I'm so against that, and so I I I done my best to. Uh, write a song about it and it i i stayed up a lot of a lot of nights i couldn't sleep trying to do it and i brought it to our pastor out here at uh where we go to church uh, lindell decker and uh then he got a hold of michael and uh i showed the song to michael and he 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 thought it was a good song too and so we went from there to where we're at now we went to nashville and uh, Michael knew all the people and uh, everything down there. I didn't know nothing. But anyway, he got us started down there uh, uh, and recorded it. And so now we're, we're uh, kind of sitting back waiting for the song to take a hold. Yeah, and that song is called Stand Our Ground, which we are actually going to play it here for you guys in just a, a few minutes. And it, the subject matter is abortion. And man, guys, uh, hop in here a second. I mean, abortion has become such a hot topic in our culture and in our society today. And I think it's one that 
you know, the Christian church wavers on a little bit here and there. How do we interact with it? Where do we stand on it? How much do we talk about it? Do we not talk about it? What do we do with it? So we really appreciate that there are people stepping up to the plate and talking about the subject matter that is abortion. And I love that you're bringing it to the music genre. Yeah. Well, my name's Michael Connors. And hey, Jeremiah, I really appreciate you uh, having us on your podcast. Um, a little bit of history of of me is that, you know, I'm a guitar player, singer, and an artist. Um, you guys, and also while I was in Nashville, became a pre- the president of a, an apparel company called Open the Cage Gear. Um, moved to Tennessee to just write and pursue songs. Was working on uh, a country album. Uh, some of those country songs that I wrote, uh, one of those uh, gentlemen named Cody Johnson cut one of those songs and put it on his Gotta Be Me album. Uh, this, the album's doing great. Cody's a great guy. Um, in the middle of making a country album, I you know, just kind of hit a wall uh, in a career. And, of course, I always pray that Christ would lead and guide and direct my steps in everything that I'm doing because, I mean, he's the ultimate uh, in everything that we do. And he said, do all things like we do unto him. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, talking about uh, music and those types of things and how it can just music in general and then putting the word of God within it and how it can uh, really speak to your soul. You know, it can lift your spirit. And, you know, that's where my heart is. And I'm always looking for the opportunity to do something positive. I'm a servant of the Lord. And, mm-hmm. In the middle of doing a country album, I just was, you know, reading the Bible on the back porch, and I said a little prayer, um, and ended up meeting a former Marine, uh, Jim Kinsey, who asked me to, the very right out of the gate, um, he asked me to write a song for one of his friends that had received the Medal of Honor um, in 2009, and from there, the opportunities uh, to write with our our heroes of this nation, um, they just kept going. And the, and the album that came from that was an Overcome album. Um, so it's it's fitting to, like when Bobby came to me with this song, uh, it's another one of those things where it, it has the substance of the Word of God in it. Um, it's it, it takes a stand. And, you know, the thing about the Word of God is, you know, he said it. He set the bar. Um, we are just servants of him and stand on his word and, and have faith in him. And so, you know, this this particular subject, it always reminds me of when, uh, you know, that story in Exodus or, uh, you know, about Moses, uh, where the midwives, uh, they feared God more than they feared Pharaoh and they didn't, uh, you know, they didn't kill the the children they they saved them and um there is the story of moses and and who knows how many all that when these lives are spared you know because god gives life and who knows where these these people are going to end up and what they're going to do and how they'll affect the world uh through being vessels of the living god i mean through christ it's uh you know the word of God never goes out mm-hmm. void, so I'm just grateful uh, to be a part of you know, to be a part of this song. That's awesome. Well, we're talking about the song called "Stand Our Ground." The subject matter is abortion. I know we got some comments, we have some questions. We really want to dive a little bit deeper into it, but let's do this, guys. Let's listen to the song. We're going to kind of come back around, and we're going to talk to Bob and Michael a little bit more about this song. Let's check it out. It's called "Stand Our Ground."
Well, there it is. Stand Our Ground. What a powerful song. Love those lyrics. Love those words. Let's dive in. Let's talk about it, guys. Michael, uh, I know Bob is kind of the originator, had this idea, this song bubbling up inside of him. He was stewing on it, had the words, the lyrics. What were your thoughts as he approached you about this song? Um, You know, I was playing guitar here at Walking Faith, and Bobby approached me after church, and he said, Michael, I... He said, I don't write songs, but I've been waking up and writing songs. And, I was, and he was like, you know, I'd like for you to, to take a look at one if, and see if you can do anything with it. <clears throat> and so he brought it to me and I, I I read through it and I was like, Bobby, wow. I mean, what a message and what a like, yeah, I absolutely uh, want to do something with this. And I just wanted to take a couple of days to pray about it and, and see what is it like, because is it me that needs to sing it? Or is it somebody that I might know? Uh, you know, just give it some time. Well, uh, it wasn't but a couple of days. And then Bobby, uh, gave me a call. He said, Michael, Mark Mathis is going to be out here at walking faith Friday to finish up this song. Are you going to be here? And <laughs> <laughs> I said, I said, okay, yeah, I'll mm-hmm. be there. So I showed up and Mark was on the piano and Bobby was sitting there and, and we sit down and, and started reading through and, and, uh, it came together, you know, very quickly. Um, and then everybody, we all just decided that I should go record the song and put it out there. Um, so, you know, with a short notice, um, sometimes it, you know, it can be hard to put together a, a team uh, to record. Um, but, you know, the the Lord's hands in it and this song, it just everything really went quickly and everything was so smooth. And, uh, you know, I have a good friend in, in Nashville that plays steel guitar. Uh, his name's Cowboy Eddie Long, and he played with Hank Jr. for almost 20 years and he's been with Jamie Johnson his whole career and he's still with Jamie and uh, I called him and I said cowboy uh, could you play some steel on this song next week uh, he said well let me check my schedule and I'll let you know well he called me back and and he was available and so I knew I had me uh, and I could play my guitar and, and cowboy could play steel uh, I didn't know 
well, when Jamie was playing next, but I went ahead and called Cowboy back and said, man, do you think the rest of the band, the guys could play? And he said, let me get back to you. And uh, he got right back to me. And yep. So uh, the drummer and the bass player, uh, they were available, uh, Cody and Mark. So from there, I just, you know, there was a fiddle player that named Jimmy Herman that I wanted to work with. And he's very, he's a multi-instrumentalist. He's very talented. Uh, he's been Carrie Underwood's band leader for a long time. And I gave him a call and didn't get anything back immediately uh the next day uh, he did get back with me and said yes i am available so uh skid mills was the producer on this and he's done you know some bands and stuff like third day and saving able and uh he scheduled some time there at uh, omni sound in nashville and me and bobby uh we jumped in the jeep and headed to nashville and that was bobby's first trip to nashville uh so it was special on a lot of different levels uh just the way that it came together and the fellowship that we that we had on the way down there and how everything came together, it was just really special. Um, and so, and then it turned out just great, you know? Yeah, that's. A, I'm just glad you didn't have Kelly sing. Kelly yeah, Stevens it's a good thing you didn't track. have me sing. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, I just wanted to uh, jump in there real quick. Uh, for the modern Christian dads out there, uh, Bobby Stevens is my dad, and uh, uh, I'm just so proud of him and, and uh, what God is doing in his life. Now, this is a guy that is just a country guy. He's been a businessman man his whole life, been very successful in the restaurant business. Never wrote a poem, never, never sang a song. I've never. Uh, <laughs> this is so far out of his realm that you would think. But here's a man that uh, just said yes to Jesus. Mm. And, and uh, here's a man that uh, just said, God, I'll do whatever you want me mm. to do. And uh, uh, right around the time that um, they were changing some laws in uh, New York City uh, with abortion, you know, he sees this on, uh, on the news, and, and Jesus just starts penetrating my dad's heart about uh kids that are being aborted children that are being aborted and and uh so my dad had compassion on that and and uh, not only compassion with with the children that are being aborted but also the the women that are going through that as well well you know there's as the song says there's plenty to throw around plenty mm -hmm. of guilt to throw around and and right. uh you know here here god has uh, taken a, a man and uh, there were several men there uh, in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> you know, Salem. I mean, it'd be the same as Carthage, but, you know, just they're hidden, but God does some powerful things and has, yeah. has uh, helped them uh, produce this song. So anyway, I just wanted to say how proud I was of my dad Amen. and, and uh, uh, modern Christian dads are proud of their dads and they're proud of their sons. Yep. And uh, we yep. just want to we just want uh, Jesus to uh, rule them all. Yeah, so. amen. amen. I'm kind of scared. You might start writing songs now. <laughs> hey, I, I've, I've got one that I'm writing for you right now. So uh, <laughs> for him or about him? <laughs> right, right, right. About him, actually. exactly. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Greg, well, I just I was going to say, you know, when we were listening that, to that song, the, the the law that New York passed actually popped into my head and I didn't even know that that's why he wrote that song. Yeah. Yeah. How, I mean, that song really just touches my heart because abortion has just become the norm now. Yeah. It's like, it's no big deal anymore to just, yes. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yep. And, and I, I just pray that God uses this song and yep. continues to use your dad and what he's doing with them. Yeah. It's amazing. And, and we, sh we saw the show that movie unplanned at our church yeah. uh, a yeah. couple months back. And like you said, our, our, culture our society has tried to normalize it and especially they yeah. showed that in the movie to those girls oh it's no big deal just take right. a pill just a right. surgery it's just like uh having some other type of medical procedure that you have it's yep. just perfectly natural it's perfect and that is wrong and abortion is wrong yep. abortion is murder but i think the flip side of what we've learned personally as a church because in the last few months in our church yep. we've had girls come to our church that have had abortion, yeah. yep. and I do love the lyric line of uh, of not blaming or condemnation. We've learned 
specifically as a church, our church specifically, yeah. that there has to be love and grace and mercy and forgiveness because those girls were broken. They were hurting. You know, I, uh, at least the ones we've interacted yep. with, they right. didn't have someone that wrapped their arms around them and said, hey, Jesus is the answer. Yeah. There's a better way. You know, they submitted to culture because that's what culture spoke yeah. to them. And the, the thing it's important to, to know, uh, Pastor, is that um, – we don't hear the other side of the story most of the time. Yes. You know, that we hear about the abortions and, and nobody, it doesn't even phase anybody really right. anymore. Uh, we've just gotten so used to it. But the other side of the story, and, and I think that that's just starting to come out really, uh, is the mother's that have done uh, yep. had the abortions and yep. the, the amount of guilt, yes. uh, the amount of pain, right. Right. Uh, the brokenness, and they feel like uh, they feel like Jesus could never forgive them, and that that could be further from the truth. Mm -hmm. His mercies right. and His grace is new every morning, Amen. and and so uh, I, I hope that this song also will show that mercy and grace to yep. the other side of the story. Yep. So. Exactly. Yeah, I could, I couldn't agree more with that. And this is a guy. This is a dude issue right here. This is this could be an issue where guys should step up in right because typically a lot of the pro lifers are all these women yep. and and guys. We got to step up in this yep. issue. This is an issue where we have to raise our voice yep. as men. This is not this is not a woman issue. Yeah, uh, because they, they again, that, make that's it that what, way. Yeah, right, yeah. right. That's what they want to pose it as. Right. This is just this is me, my body. I can do whatever I want with my body. Right. No, this is a God issue. It's a family right. issue. It's it's a man of God issue that yes. we need to stand for and address. So I encourage you as well. Hey, Michael and Bob, tell me a little bit about what your, what's your vision? What's your dream for this song? Uh, what's the vision and dream for the song? What was that? What's the vision and dream for the song? Oh, we would just like to reach. All, we wanted to give all these little babies a voice. Yep. They don't. They're they're. Just abortion places. I I, I feel so. Uh, Jesus is in those babies, and mm -hmm. I, I just wanted to give them a voice. And Michael did too. Michael's got two young boys. Mine's all grown, but goodness, I just think this is so wrong that I don't. I I think a lot of the mothers are getting just one side of this story, like that. It's all about money, and I believe these babies need a break. And and I think if they listen to the song and and either talk to either one of us, if we could talk to some of the mothers, maybe we could change some minds. And I hope if they listen to the song, that that it, it'll help them. And uh, praise God, I I know Jesus is with us on this. Yeah, and there's and, you know I uh, and just. You know, earlier you said, uh, you know, say yes to Jesus. You know, the Word of God, like in, in John, where he says, in the beginning, the Word, the Word was God, the Word was with God, and there was nothing made that didn't come from God. And heaven and earth will pass away, but he said, my Word will abide forever. Just say yes. And that's how I ended up in here. Bobby came to me with his heart heavy with the Lord. I said, you know, yes, I want to serve and do um what i can and so only god knows you know i just want to these opportunities to be able to come on here and talk with you find folks and to continue just to sing the song and and to talk about jesus and and share you know the word of god yeah amen and, and when you think about it there's really not a lot of songs out there that address this topic right i mean i'm just trying to go through my head right now, popular songs I've heard on Christian, right. Christian, I mean, obviously about life, salvation, but to really attack that specific issue that is abortion. I know that I've been convicted about that, especially with the unplanned, because I, I am one of these guys that like, I don't really enjoy politics. I don't like to, right. it's, it's just annoying. I know as a pastor and as a leader, you know, there are certain things that you have to balance from the pulpit regarding that, talking about it, et cetera. But, you know, it, this is an issue we have to the lyric of the song said, "Stand, stand our yeah. ground." I mean, that's yeah. We're not. We don't want to make it a political political issue. But if people go to the polls <laughs> right. and they don't know yeah. what to vote for, vote for life. Vote for life. Stand, oh, stand our ground. I yeah. mean, amen, yeah. amen to that. So yeah, amen. It's you know we do live in that type of country. Mm -hmm. 
that we, we live in a free country, so we have to do things spiritually, but there's right. a practical aspect that yeah. we can do. That is vote, right. vote, vote for life, vote, vote for, for life. candidates that believe right. in life. We can do that. We still have that privilege in America. Keep in mind, there's a lot of countries that do not have that privilege to take a stand. So yeah. let's take a stand. Amen. 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 You guys Amen. Any have other questions or thoughts about the song? Uh, uh, no, I. Uh, I would just like to say that if we saved one one baby, mm -hmm. one baby, the song yeah. has has done what it's supposed to do, or we wanted it to do. Amen. So I hope to save more than that, but I'm just saying if we yep. save one, my goodness, that's better than what we had before we started. Amen. Amen. Well, I guess I have a question for Michael. Michael, is this song going to be on an album, or is it just a single right yeah, now, or good, what's the future it. plans for this? This song is a single. We released it as a single because, like I said, when when he came to me, I just wanted to move forward and do due diligence. And so now it's available. <laughs>